RMDs, also known as required minimum distributions, millions and millions of your clients and people all over the country are hitting that magic age, 70 and a half years old. In fact, the first baby boomer hit 70 and a half in July of 2016. And there's about 80 million people online behind her. Many millions have retirement accounts that have required minimum distribution. So you're going to see more people through the pipeline that need help on these issues. The big problem with RMDs is the penalty. It's a 50, 50, 50% 50 penalty on any RMD that is missed, not taken. So that is a big deal, but that can be waived by IRS for valid reasons. That's not the biggest deal. The biggest deal is making mistakes. So let me run through five common mistakes. The first one, people have accounts all over the place. Make sure you've inventoried. This is where you can show your value as an advisor. All the accounts, clients can have three IRAs, two 403Bs, a 401K. They have to have a complete inventory so they know which accounts are subject to required minimum distributions. And you can also guide them on something called the aggregation rules, which accounts distributions must come from. For example, IRAs have an aggregation rule. You can take the required amount from any one or a combination of IRAs, but you can't take from a 401k to satisfy an IRA. 403Bs have an aggregation rule. You can take from any combination of 403Bs, but you can't take from an IRA to satisfy a 403B. So make sure your clients have a full list of accounts and they know which accounts have required minimum distributions. That's one. Number two is the still working rule. There are exceptions to required minimum distributions, but only in plans. There's what's known as a still working rule. If a client is still working past 70 and a half, they can delay required distributions, but only on, say, the 401k plan of the company they're still working for. This still working exception does not apply to IRAs, never applies to IRAs, so they still must take those. And it doesn't apply to other plan balances they have of companies they are no longer working for. So be aware of the still working rule, but know which accounts it doesn't apply to. Number three, don't let clients pay tax twice on the same money. Many clients have after-tax funds in their IRAs or 401ks. For example, IRAs could have non-deductible contributions or after-tax money in there rolled in from 401k plans. There's a proportionate rule there, so when the RMDs come out, they may not all be taxable. That's a client has to keep track of that on Form 8606. They may work with their accountant or you may work with the accountant, but make sure you've asked about after-tax money in an IRA or plan so you don't pay tax twice on that money or the client doesn't when they take the money out. They'll appreciate that advice. So that's item three. Item four, a big mistake I see. RMDs, required minimum distributions, cannot be rolled over and they cannot be converted to Roth IRAs. Now, it's generally clients making this mistake because they think, well, as long as I'm taking the money out and paying the tax, what is IRS care? Let me convert it to a Roth. You can't do that. It's not allowed in the tax law. A required minimum distribution cannot be rolled over or converted to a Roth IRA. And the first dollars out of an IRA are deemed to satisfy the required minimum distribution. So those dollars have to come out first. Then after that is satisfied, then other funds could be rolled over or converted. Item five, qualified charitable distributions. The tax law at the end of 2015 made this permanent. This is a permanent fixture. So if you have clients and to qualify for this, this is what we call the charitable IRA rollover. It's for clients who are charitably inclined. It only applies to clients who are IRA owners who are 70 and a half years old or older or IRA beneficiaries. The benefit here, they can transfer money up to $100,000 a year from their IRA to a charity, if they're charitably inclined. Obviously, if they're giving to charity, this is the most tax efficient way to do it because it takes it off the tax return. Now, you don't get a corresponding deduction, but it doesn't increase their adjusted gross income, which could trigger other taxes. 
So talk to clients about this. If they're charitably inclined, if they give any money to charity, and they're an IRA owner, a beneficiary, and over 70 and a half years old, see if they want to do it this way. A direct transfer from their IRA to charity satisfies the required distribution amount up until either the 100,000 limit or whatever their required amount is. These are five items that if you discuss with clients, you may avoid some big uh, catastrophes with new required minimum distributions for your new clients.